So here comes a really important part. We've got to now do our research and I've sent out a load of questionnaires to different breeders. I was in touch with about 19 in total. Um, only about seven were suitable. Out of seven, only three of them would be willing to answer um, questionnaires that I sent out. Some were disgusted that I even had the audacity to ask questions, uh, which was quite surprising. Others said, you know, now's not the time. Um, but being where we are, three people bothered to send back the questionnaire, which is quite interesting. Um, remember, this is really important as well. You've got to ask questions. You've got to do your research. Same way, you know, uh, uh, it always surprises me that people out there do more research when they're buying a computer um, that they might replace in two years' time. When you're, when you're getting a dog, people go out and buy it on a whim. Uh, they don't research the breed. They don't research um, the breeder. So, and there's, there's lots of stuff you've got to ask. So hopefully this will give you some of the ideas. Now I'm only going to give you some of the questions and um, the rest of the questions will be at the end of the video. Breeder number one said, uh, health and temperament, but also with drive to work. Although with a Mali, drive is usually easy enough to get. I have to be honest, confirmation is not something I look at. By that, I mean I wouldn't look at uh, length of pastons, hocks, etc. But I do want my dogs to be able to jump, move. Breed number two says our primary goal is to breed healthy dogs with good working character. Steady, with drive, but without nervous behaviour. To breed good working sport dogs uh, and we will not sell puppies as pet dogs only. You need to work with the dog. Breed number three says you cannot or should not breed for one thing only. I breed for temperament, health and looks in equal proportions as, good, as a good dog needs to have all three to be a good example of the breed. As my lines are show lines, I do not breed for drive. There is enough natural drive in this breed for them to do perfectly suitable for uh, agility, obedience and similar. So the next question, um, what do you do in the way of toilet training, gives me an indication as to uh, how much they're clued up on, on, um, on behaviour and if they're trying to reinforce good behaviour from the off, which is, you know, name of the game. So, breeder number one says, I haven't tried this, but my friend did with his litter of rots. Uh, and it's a cat litter tray, apparently the puppies use it just like kittens would. When they're old enough, I take them outside first thing for them to empty themselves and try to do this during the day. But to be honest, with eight or nine little darlings running around, there is usually a lot of cleaning up to do. Nice, honest answer. Um, I'm not expecting someone to have an eight week old puppy fully house trained, but the fact that they're taking steps to help towards it will be a factor. Breeder number two says, in the litter box there is one side for toilet and the other side for sleeping. In the last litter they were doing toilet on the right side at four weeks of age. In this line of dogs you see lots of very pure natural behaviour. Um, from five weeks of age we go out a lot so that they toilet outside and they get rewarded for that. Not every time because it's a bit difficult with eight puppies but we are reinforcing for toilet outside. We do not use toilet nappies or anything like that. We also go on leash walks so the puppies can toilet on leash and we let them toilet on different surfaces. Minky! Good girl. Breeder number three says... <laughs> Minky's harassing people. Come! Good girl, well done. Here you go. Go and get your toy. Uh, Brin number three says, I'm unsure of the meaning of the question. You cannot start house training an entire litter of, of uh, perhaps 10 puppies, but obviously they will be used to being let outside regularly from a few weeks of age. Another important question to ask is, where will the puppies be raised? Um, it's been scientifically proven that, that pups who experience more in those early stages of life 
are generally more confident and uh, turn out to be more reliable, uh, happy dogs in, uh, as adults. Um, so my question is where will the puppies be raised? Breeder number one says puppies will be born and brought up inside. I have a utility room which is attached to the house so that later they may spend some time there but to be honest I do like having them nearby to watch and observe. Um, so in the house. Um, breeder number two says there will be at my place or at um, Dappy Breeder's place but they are raised in normal conditions so the bitch has enough privacy uh, but the puppies are well socialised with other people, they go to travel with us a lot, the puppies will get used to um, kennel as well as in the house because some people do have their dogs in the kennels and others in the house. My dog normally lives in the house but she doesn't mind staying in a kennel if she goes to her breeder. So that's quite interesting. You know, one thing that we hear quite often is that you shouldn't get dogs if they're bred in kennels, but giving them that experience might be a bonus, especially if you're going to use uh, kennels as the dog gets older. Uh, breeder number three says, um, indoors in the home with time spent outdoors every day from three weeks of age, no kenneling. Um, so all three breeders, very good points there. Following on from that last one, um, one of the questions I've put on here is what have they been socialised and exposed to before leaving the home? Um, breeder number one says, <laughs> I do the early neurological stimulation programme, which may or may not help to make dogs better, but it doesn't seem to have done any harm so far. Now there is some research on this, um, and, and it does seem very interesting. Uh, I get my puppies out and about, I take them to lots of different places, horse, livery yard, uh, friends houses and gardens, and, uh, gardens, large fields, indoor equestrian centres. When they're eating solids I move around and I do little scent pads with them, I get them to experience lots and lots of different things. Big tarpaulin sheets bunched up so when they walk on them there is no solid ground. Sometimes the hose pipe is switched on gently so that they run over the tarpaulin mountain and go through a little flowing water to get their food. They walk over mesh, pebbles, soil, sand, wobble boards, walk the plank leading up to another level, as many different surfaces as I can. Different toys, different objects, boxes to explore inside, stand on, sometimes they may be collapsible as puppy stands on it, but nothing dangerous. Hard plastic toys, rubber toys, fluffy toys, metal objects, play tuggy games, chasing balls. I like to do little exercises with them when they are approximately five weeks of age, so maybe a hand touch or climb on the box. Just little things to get their brains working and thinking. Do something to get them uh, rewarded. Socialising, I get family and friends to visit and take pups to the other people's houses to introduce them to other safe dogs. My downside is I don't have kids. Not many friends have children either. Um, I do try to get some to the address, like nieces, kids, and sometimes friends' kids, uh, but they aren't local, so my pups don't have a lot of contact with children. Again, a really, really honest answer um, gives me um, an insight that if I am going to take from breeder number one, I do have to do extra work with children. Um, and that's not a problem. As long as I know, I can certainly build on that. Go and get your toy. Breeder number two. <laughs> Come on then. No, your toy, you Wally. Good girl. Yay. Breeder number two says uh, they will be socialized in traveling crate training car rides traffic noises as much as possible in nature but some sounds with cds they go to the training club walk in the woods they are socialized with other people children other dogs horses different environments different surfaces weird objects like tunnels and stuff shooting and other things as well um, so again a nice in-depth socialization program which is what we really really want not so much on the surfaces though on this one. Uh, breeder number three says we live in the countryside so gunshots and bird scarers and similar is the norm around here. Um, none of the adult dogs are worried by fireworks or gunshots or thunderstorms. The radio is on all day, TV is in the evening and all normal household noises are, and deliberate noises such as dropping items like metal bowls etc to get them used to sudden noises. Um, pups will have met a variety of people, K 
cats, smaller dogs, horses, chickens, and will have been in a vehicle in different areas outdoors, within reason before they've been vaccinated. Uh, they will be exposed to different floor surfaces and items to climb on and in. So it sounds like all three breeders are making a, a, a real good, strong effort to um, give these puppies lots of new experiences. That is so important. 